It's your morning mix. It's 10.32 here on today's edition of the programme. And by all means, uh, give us a shout on our comment line, 53 9145 because you might want to use that comment line now to air your views, or for that matter, our text line, 87 The link between fertility and obesity. Um, it was in the news uh, on the front of the, pap- uh, the independent newspaper this week, earlier this week. But I'm joining the studio by Siobhan Kiho, and she's going to discuss this and a lot more issues as well. Good morning to Siobhan. Good morning, Alan. Thanks for asking me to come on to your programme. Well, first of all, who are you? What do you do? Um, My name is Siobhan Kyo. Um, I am a registered nurse and registered midwife. Um, I qualified as a midwife in 95 and um, I worked in an IVF clinic after that. Um, After that, I became quite interested in natural medicine and I studied Chinese medicine. Um, herbs and acupuncture. I did a five-year course and I qualified in 2001. And um, I treat everything Western medicine treats with Chinese medicine. Um, I'm into both. I'm into both Chinese medicine and acupuncture and herbs. And the main area I'm interested in now is fertility. Um, so I treat a lot of fertility and my aim is if I can help to give people's hope with fertility okay, problems. Okay, so what are the, the, the key problems regarding infertility? Is obesity, to isolate obesity, is that wrong? Has been one factor. Is that just one of many possible it is factors? One certainly, it is one factor. Um, there are many factors. Um, my whole thing is getting the area, treating the problem early. Um, yes, I read that article the other day in the Independent. Um, I thought it was a bit harsh on the front page. Um, Why do yes, you think it was harsh? Um, because I think these women need to be treated with more compassion and. Um, but I do feel we need to have more of an integrated okay. approach with the multidisciplinary team treating the problem. My whole thing is treating the problem early um, rather than um, rather than link the, the complications with obesity and pregnancy. Yes, it is a 30, 30%, um, rate, 30% of pregnant women are overweight. It mm. is linked, unfortunately, with perinatal death. Um, 18% of pregnant women now have gestational diabetes. Um, 50% of these women have a cesarean section. But my whole thing is conquering the problem early, preconceptually. And um, so my whole thing is in treating okay. um, women to get them pregnant. For instance, no one to my knowledge um, that I can remember now, I've been doing this for 15 years, has ever had to go on to insulin and my the the women I treat, the cesarean section rate is about 7% as opposed to 30% and as I say I'm into both Chinese medicine and herbs so even for instance if a woman needs, inverted commas needs the IVF, um, I could put my hand in my heart and say 85-90% of these couples get pregnant first time. Yeah, However, say, uh, every, majority, everyone hears the words IVF a lot of people won't have a remote clue what it is. What is IVF? IVF is um, it's an artificial method it's be, I, I, I actually worked in an IVF clinic in the past um, IVF is where they take the egg and sperm out and um, where they meet to form an embryo and then they put the embryo back in and um, unfortunately the statistics are only 25% of IVF's work and why is that? Do you know why that is? Um, well these women have problems before going into the IVF that aren't often aren't often um, aren't often addressed beforehand and um, so that's where I, I try okay. and address it with the acupuncture and herbs but most women I treat obviously get pregnant naturally so my aim is to try and help couples to get pregnant naturally. Right. Well we'll come back to you in a second and ask you to outline what you actually do and how people can maybe draw a little bit of comfort from what you do this morning yeah. but there's two ladies here in the studio with you. Would you like to introduce the lady to your left for me please? Right this is Ailson, Ailson Doyle. Um, Ailson very kindly um, on the last minute um, rescheduled to get here this morning and Ailson is very happy to tell her okay. story. Ailson is someone that I treated. All Thank right. you, Ailson. What is your story, Ailson? And if it's, I know it's, it could be complicated, so be careful about men- mentioning names or anything. So, uh, sure. yeah, uh, What's the background to your story? Good morning, Alan. Good morning. Um, well, uh, I suppose once I married my, my husband, um, we tried for a baby unsuccessfully for about a year and a half and um, I decided to go get some tests done um, so visited my local doctor who referred me to a specialist and um, with time the results came back and showed that I had an FSH level of 29. What's that? Um, it's basically 
um, Siobhan, you might describe what FSH is. Um, FSH means follicle stimulating hormone. It's the ability at which the follicles can be developed in the ovary. Um, IVF clinics typically don't do IVF unless it's below 12. So with an FSH of 29, um, Ilson, I'm sure, will tell you herself, but the only yeah. option she was given was to have, have a donor egg, use an IVF to use somebody right. else's yeah. egg. So once um, the doctors diagnosed the FSH has been 29, um, I was told that the only viable option for me to have a child was by means of donor egg. Mm. So donor egg is where um, the egg of another lady is extracted and fertilized with as they suggested, my husband's sperm and implanted to myself. Yes. Um, at the time, that was quite traumatic and it just wasn't kind of an option for me. Yeah. So um, I kind of thought, well, I'll just check out all options. Um, and kind of I'd heard of Siobhan by word of mouth from a lady in my village. And um, I said, you know, what, I'm going to give it a shot because I was desperate at that stage. Well, um, you just weren't comfortable with another person's donor egg. It yeah. wasn't for me. Yeah, okay, I, well, yeah. I... I I kind of said, well, I want to, I want to explore all options before I, you know, get pigeonholed into one way of doing things. So, um, so visited Siobhan and I went from being hopeless to having hope. And that's a huge leap, I can tell you, when okay. you're in that situation. Um, so Siobhan kind of said, listen, I can't give you any guarantees. She was very straight up, very frank, can't give you any guarantees, but did say, look, she'd seen this before. She'd seen this present. Um, the doctors had termed my condition premature menopause and that she had she had treated it successfully in the past but obviously everybody's body responds differently yeah. and there was no guarantees with me so um i suppose i, I kind of embarked i i kind of said if i'm going to give this a shot i'm going to go full steam ahead and i'll apply everything that she mm -hmm. she suggested and i think i must have been her best student because she explained that part of my problem was it was Fertility was the secondary problem. The primary problem was my body wasn't producing blood. And if we could correct that by means of changing my diet, I'd taking a plant-based um, supplement, um, that hopefully my body would start to produce blood and be able to sustain, a preg okay. first of all, conceive and then sustain the pregnancy. So, so what happened? So um, within two months, my body, I literally, I went from always being tired and exhausted. My body just, I had so much energy. It was almost like I was becoming very young. <laughs> like I, the energy of a 10 year old mm. um, my FSH dropped I went to the doctors had it retested two months later after visiting Siobhan it went from 29 to 10.2 which was miraculous they, mm. they were they, they, I didn't explain to them I'd been attending Siobhan mm. and they they couldn't offer me a reason as to why it could drop because generally your FSH can fluctuate marginally but not yeah. it came it came down into a normal range. So everything was going in the right direction. Absolutely, so yeah. So everybody's on tender hooks now. What has happened as yeah. regards conceiving baby? Well, on month three, Siobhan had kind of outlined, listen, this is what you need to do. And on month three, um, I was pregnant completely naturally and with Siobhan's help. <laughs> so it was story. fantastic, I can tell you. And how long ago yeah. was this? My child is now, he's six. So That's fantastic. Yeah, healthy baby boy. That must eight have been pounds, some emotional roller coaster that you've been on. Oh, it was wonderful. I mean, but the big thing, like the reason I'm coming here today is I know how it feels to have that feeling of hopelessness yes, yeah. and to to kind of be to be given a, just one drop of hope means everything so um, you got to explore all options and for yeah. you you came out of it distraught uh, and and all of a sudden you found hope I, yeah. I found hope but one thing i will say is that when i apply something i go full steam ahead so i i was very i was probably one of siobhan's best students i was very diligent if siobhan told me to give up dairy wheat sugar i did it <laughs> and um you know the funny thing is people were looking at me and saying god you're looking great and you know you've you know what, have you gone on a diet now i had dropped weight and siobhan did say to me at the time you know it is a factor it's not everything but it's certainly a factor and i did drop weight but um I was kind of smugly laughing on the inside when people were telling me how good I was looking and, you know, how, you know, I had all this energy that I'd never had in my childhood. Yeah, so it was yeah. great. And even today I, I experienced the benefits of it. It's an incredible story. Uh, Rita, 
What about your your story? I know, and relax. You're, you're amongst <laughs> friends. Yeah, well, my story started back in 2009 and I was to be sent for a procedure because I would have had problems every month. And when I went, I was told how bad this procedure was to be. They were, they were going to burn the lining of my womb and I would never be able to conceive. And this was a separate procedure? This was just, yeah. I had never even thought of having a baby. Mm. And... I, I, went, I went to find out about this procedure and they said, like, I didn't want any children. I would never be able to have another one. If I did get pregnant, the baby wouldn't be able to stay. So but when myself and my partner got home, we said, oh, you know, they just put the idea into our heads, say if we did have another baby. I was mm. 38 at this stage. And you had children before? I you? have two older children. Okay, yeah. So I went to see another girl in, in Wexford Town, Heike. She works with herbs as well and she does eye reading and that. She's very good. She actually gave me Siobhan's number. And it took me about four months to to think. I was saying, you know, I was kind of him and hawing about having a baby. So I went to see Siobhan about four months later in the October. And by the following October, I had had a baby. I was pregnant within three months of seeing and what Siobhan. about the procedure with the lining then? What, I, I, it just sounded, with it. I didn't. It just sounded so horrific mm. that I would have rather have a hysterectomy at that stage. Right. But it, the whole idea just gave me the idea to have a baby. Mm. So Siobhan helped me get pregnant then. And at 39, I had a baby. And then I went back a couple... I kind of kept up with Siobhan because the acupuncture is great for, like, mm. different things. Tendonitis, I had TMJ in my jaw. She cured that. And I just decided that we might want to have another one. I was 43, and I found out I was pregnant on the last little chap. At 43. At 43, and I was threatened with a miscarriage at 10 weeks. And the hospital said, you know, you've been here before. If you lose the baby, there's no, nothing we can do. It more than likely could happen. And I was distraught, so I rang Siobhan then on the Monday morning, got lots of Chinese herbs off Siobhan, took them for three weeks and carried the baby on till full term and he was born last December year gone yeah. so she does she covers everything with the Chinese herbs and with the acupuncture and and, and, and life is good life is very good yeah and that procedure that we that you didn't do how, how are you health wise now with that um, well I'll be going back to Siobhan to just sort me out because I, I couldn't it's yeah. called a uterine ablation and it yeah. just sounds very severe so I'll go back to Siobhan for just to keep me on an even keel Siobhan, for people out there, you don't want to give them false hope. And obviously, nothing is 100%. But are you saying this morning, listening to both Alison and and, and, uh, Rita there, that there is always hope? Oh, yes. Oh, there's always hope. I've seen seen many, many cases, actually, since 2010. Actually, it was Ailson um, was one of the first women to write a testimonial. And um, so I got this idea about giving couples hope. Of course, you know, there there is always a certain percentage that, that it mightn't work for. Mm. But I think I could put my hand in my heart and say 85, 90 percent of people that come into me do get pregnant and carry a healthy, a healthy baby to M term. Um, so, um, like even since 2010, um, I think it's 60 or 70 couples now have written their testimonials. A lot of them mm-hmm. failed IVFs, multiple miscarriages, told they were needed a donor egg, um, yeah. it's bad sperm problems. So it's just about giving people hope. That's the reason it's, I'm it's here this an, morning. It's, it's an extremely sensitive issue. Oh, it's an extremely sensitive Ilson issue. And, and to it's share it's their very today. big of them to share their story. It is. It's, it's huge. It's, 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 yeah. it's absolutely it's huge, huge and I'm very grateful to it's them. It's the reality of people who have been down a very difficult road and have seen, pardon the, the use of the cliche, some light at the end of the tunnel. If people, we've got to wrap it up for the moment, but if people, if people uh, want to contact you, you have a website, is that right? I have a website. It's called fertilitytreatment.com dot ie or if people google my name Siobhan Kyo at what clinic and um, there's a lot of about what I do and my qualifications I've actually just done another course in obs and gynae um, I'm very much into modern research and western medicine I've just done that with an obstetrician researcher based over in um, um, London so yeah. yes the qualifications and the stories are on that yeah can, can I thank, uh, thank the three of you for, for joining me in the studio this morning uh, an uplifting story much appreciated that you popped in and wish you well the three of you for the future and could I just say, thank you, Alan, and could I just say one, one other aspect? Um, I have three wonderful daughters, Katie, Millie and Sarah, and they bring me great joy every day. And, and if I can help to help other couples to bring joy to them as well, that's, that's what I'm about. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Siobhan. In a few moments' time, Dave O'Grady from the Order of Malta.